I've received a lot of comments and messages asking me what happened to El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Several people have asked when I will be making a video to address the accident and initially, I didn't plan on doing so. To be honest, I don't know much more about the cause of the accident than what's already been said, but based on what I do know about the ride's wooden track, I will try to address what aspects of the track and where on the ride the most damage most likely occurred. So I won't be talking about block zones in this video, but I will show some cool diagrams about how wooden coaster track works. Let's dive in. Just to quickly sum things up, El Toro suffered some sort of accident earlier this summer on June 29th, 2021. At 4.23 p.m., the sixth car of the A train, so the train that isn't covered in Kia Soul advertising, partially derailed. This caused the attraction to not complete its cycle as normal. It's said that car six partially derailed at the top of the lift hill before the first drop, and was dragged through the rest of the circuit thanks to the weight of the five cars in front, which still tracked the course as normal. As the car dragged, it echoed a screeching grind as dust and other particles flew out from underneath the train. Witnesses say they saw the last car fishtailing as it dragged along the track, and it even emitted smoke from underneath. With car six dragging along the track, the cycle ran much slower than normal. The train apparently just had enough momentum to clear this hill here, the infamous Rolling Thunder Hill, and then valleyed as it climbed into the final brake run, causing the train to come to a stop in this location here. 32 guests were aboard the A train at the time of the accident, and luckily none were injured. After the ride came to a stop at the base of this hill, the train was strapped down to the structure so that it remained in place, and riders were then evacuated from the train and walked back to the station building. Judging from pictures, it is obvious that car 6 is not sitting in its normal position. The rear of the car looks much more elevated than normal, while the front of the car is pitched forward. As far as I know, this is the only time the attraction has ever valued with riders on board the train. This accident took place just two weeks after the log flume also had an accident, where a damaged piece of steel railing on the trough caused a boat to tip on its side, injuring two riders. Ever since the accident, the ride has been shut down. Later that same week, the A-Train was hoisted over the last hill into the final brake run and left outside the station. Rumors began circulating that the derailed car had ripped out thousands of track bolts from the ride. On wooden roller coasters, track bolts are primarily used to secure steel plating to the wooden track. The steel plating is what the wheels of each train ride along as it leads to a smoother ride and helps to reduce the amount of rolling resistance or friction between the wheels and the track, also leading to a longer possible ride duration. Let me show you the different kinds of track bolts. Here we have a diagram that shows the shape of wooden coaster track. The track is shaped almost like a bloated upside down L. On top of the track, we have wide steel plating for the road wheels, which are the main running wheels of each train. On the side of the track, we have steel plating in which the side friction wheels of the coaster run along, or the guide wheels. And on the underside of the stub of the track here, we have steel plating for the upstop wheels. All three wheel types are what keep trains locked and fixed to the track. Now securing these steel plates are track bolts that run through the wooden track to secure the steel. For the top steel plating for the road wheels, there are two vertically driven bolts that secure the steel, one to the left and one to the right. The smooth end of the bolt rests inside the steel plating on top, and on the other end of the track, away from where wheels ride, is a washer and nut to secure the bolt in place. For the side friction wheel steel plating, there is also two steel bolts that are driven through the track, this time horizontally. One bolt is placed a little higher than the other. The smooth end of the bolt is placed on the steel plated end where wheels ride through, and the other end of the bolt on the outside of the track contains the washer and nut. Then last, we have track bolts that secure the steel plating for the upstop wheels. Because this steel is very thin, it is secured with a single bolt that is driven vertically through the stub of the track. The smooth end of the bolt is underneath the stub, along the steel plating, where the upstop wheels ride along. And above the track, next to the steel plating for the road wheels, is where the washer and nut are that secure the bolt in place. These bolts are built into the track in a repeating pattern so that they don't overlap and run into each other, as they all technically occupy the same space. Each bolt is placed less than one foot or 30 centimeters away from each other. Altogether, there are thousands of track bolts found in El Toro's track. Now you may think this portion of the upstop bolt is in the way of a moving train, but let me show you the underside of an El Toro train. The axle for the road wheel sits rather low to the rail, but features a groove here to allow additional clearance for the upstop bolts. But when car 6 was dragged along the track, I believe the undercarriage of car 6 caused considerable damage to the upstop bolts. Looking at how the last car of A train was positioned once the train came to a stop, it appears that the back of the car is elevated higher than normal. 
meaning the front of the car is pitched forward and is most likely what dragged along the track. The left side of the car also looks higher off the ground, so it's most likely the front right corner of car 6 that dragged along most heavily and caused the most damage. You can still see the front left road wheel present, so this part of the car probably didn't drag against the track, so it's most likely the right side track pieces of El Toro that were damaged more considerably, and the left side track pieces either weren't damaged or were damaged less. I can't say if the ride's other track bolts that secure the road running and side friction steel plating were also damaged, but I think the chances of them being damaged in the derailment were considerably less. This is because the nut and washer of these bolts are located on the outside of the track where the train wouldn't be able to come in contact with them. But the steel plating itself, along with parts of the wooden track, could have also been damaged as the undercarriage of car 6 most likely dragged along these parts also. Great Adventure got to work almost immediately to correct the damage. I hear rumors that the ride's manufacturer, Intamin, and the ride's constructor, Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC, have been involved with getting the ride back into operational order. From what I can immediately tell, it appears that a lot of work is taking place to replace the track bolts in El Toro. This is the bottom of the second drop, in between the first two airtime hills. Clamps are being used on the right side rail to most likely hold the upstop steel plating in place, as I don't see any upstop bolts in place in this area. The ride pulls a high amount of positive g-forces through this ride location, meaning the ride probably caused a high amount of damage to the track and upstop bolts here. Now here's where things are ironic. El Toro's prefabricated track is overbuilt compared to your typical wooden roller coaster. Most wooden coasters do not feature upstop steel plating during moments of high positive g-forces, or in areas of the coaster where there aren't any uplift forces or negative g-forces present. This means there are also no upstop track bolts in these locations. This is possible because the upstop wheels are not always in contact with the track like a modern steel roller coaster. There is a gap between the wheel and the track. That same gap in the wheel exists on prefabricated wooden roller coasters like El Toro. It's obvious during moments of airtime where the road wheels lift from the track. While even with this gap present, El Toro still features upstop steel plating during its entire track, which means it also features upstop track bolts. So these track bolts are present even during tight valleys of the ride where only positive g-forces are present. So ironically, the areas that don't even require upstop steel and upstop bolts were probably the most heavily damaged due to the high positive g-forces, which increased the force put down by the dragon car, whereas areas with uplift forces were most likely less damaged by the dragon car since it either lifted off the track or didn't drag as heavily against it. And just something else to note here, you'll notice that the left side upstop bolts are still present but they are not present on the right track. This helps to suggest that the right track was more damaged than the left track. Now along with this location of the ride, work seems to be taking place all over the ride course. I notice clamps, ladders, and buckets sitting around on the ride's catwalk around the layout. This appears to be another damaged area of right side track. You'll notice the upstop steel hanging down from the track. On the turn leading into the infamous Rolling Thunder Hill, a large section of right side track was removed entirely from the coaster. That suggests this area sustained a higher amount of damage than others. Some of the rails for that location have reappeared and look ready to be placed back on the structure. Looking at the rails, all the track bolts appear to be brand new, as they are all shiny and aren't covered in grease how they normally would be. These track pieces even appear to have a few areas that were retouched, as it appears they feature some new wood in these locations here. In the past, the carpentry team at Great Adventure has retracked portions of El Toro themselves, using similar methods used by the original fabrication plant in Germany. So I imagine that they are doing the same thing here also. Be sure to check out my problematic roller coasters video on intimate prefabricated wooden roller coasters for more information. Going into the ride's twister section, it appears work is also taking place here. I see a large amount of new track bolts in areas that don't seem to feature track bolts at all for the upstop steel. I also hear that car 6 of the A-Train has been removed entirely from the ride and is no longer on site. That car also most likely sustained damage to its undercarriage and will need to be repaired. The ride's second train, the B-Train, should be okay but may need to be inspected heavily as well. I've heard rumors that every single axle on each train will need to be replaced but that is nothing confirmed. As far as what caused the accident, this is purely speculation but I have reason to suspect that the front right road wheel of car 6 fell off. Judging by pictures, both road wheels are still present on the left side of car 6. The rear of the car is lifted and the front pitches forward, more to the right. So it's my suspicion that this road wheel broke from the train, causing the car to drag and not track correctly. 
As to how this wheel fell off, I believe it may have something to do with the ball bearings found inside each wheel. Ball bearings are what make the rotation of the wheels possible. I also grew up skateboarding, and skate wheels also rely on ball bearings. On skateboards, when bearings go bad and you push them too hard, they can quite literally explode and fall apart. The bearings are what keep the wheel attached to the rod that it spins on, so when the bearing is taken away, the wheel is no longer held to the rod and falls off. Roller coaster bearings are inspected daily and are something mechanics make sure are still in good operational order. Maybe what happened with El Toro is that the ball bearings on car 6 weren't properly inspected that day, or they may have went bad faster than anticipated. Now again, this is just my speculation and nothing I am saying is confirmed. If I am able to find out what actually happened, I will certainly make another video to update you guys. It is rumored that Six Flags Corporate wants El Toro to reopen sometime during the month of August. However, from what I hear as work continues on the ride, it doesn't seem likely that the ride will open in 2021. The ride has been red tagged by the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs, or DCA, meaning it has been removed from operation and placed under an engineering review. DCA spokeswoman Lisa Ryan was quoted saying, El Toro will not reopen until the DCA has provided a report by the ride manufacturer indicating what caused the derailment as well as how to mitigate the issue. Kristen Fitzgerald, the marketing and public relations manager at Six Flags Great Adventure, also commented that the train's safety systems worked as designed and the train remained on the track. Lisa Ryan said an inspector from the DCA's Carnival Amusement Ride Safety Unit inspected El Toro the day after the incident and was unable to find the cause. Over a month has passed since the accident and I'd hope the cause of it was determined by now. Work needs to be carried out to fix the damage caused by the accident and to make sure the incident never happens again. Overall, the accident is one that hits me close to home, but I am very happy that all riders were okay and didn't receive any injuries. El Toro is single-handedly responsible for turning me into the roller coaster enthusiast I am today. After taking a ride on the attraction in 2006 at the age of 10, it further sparked my growing interest in roller coasters. At the time, the thrill it offered was unmatched. Later in 2014 at the age of 18, I would get a job as a ride operator at Six Flags Great Adventure, and my ride assignment was no other than El Toro. I would spend the next few years working the attraction on and off between 2014 and 2017. During these years, not only did my interest in roller coasters continue to grow, but I also became fascinated with behind the scenes actions, how the roller coasters operated, how they were maintained, the headaches they caused parks due to various issues, and so much more. In 2017, I would start posting roller coaster related videos on YouTube under the username El Toro Ryan. The name comes from the way I would answer the work phone while working at El Toro where you were required to announce the ride you were stationed at and your name following, El Toro Ryan speaking. But even after working at the ride and dispatching thousands and thousands of cycles, I still can't believe what happened to El Toro. But once the attraction is fixed and good to go, I will no doubt be taking it for a ride over and over as I used to. Once the coaster reopens, I can assure you that it should be safe. Anyway, that will do it for this video and I hope this cleared up some of the confusion. Hopefully we will learn more about what's happening with El Toro shortly. Thanks for watching everyone and peace out.